Hi, I'm Christy. Hi, I'm Monica. And we're presenting this centrifugation operations and cell clarification. Cell clarification is the operation of separating a dispersed phase from a liquid phase, and it's conducted to prepare the cell culture for downstream processing, and some clarification methods include centrifugation and filtration. The benefits of using cell of doing cell clarification is that it's able to process large volumes uh, with robust manufacturing processes, but some challenge is that insulation and scale up limit centrifugation methods. Here's a brief history of centrifugation throughout the years. In 1969, the concept of centrifugal force was coined and the first use of centrifugal force within a laboratory setting was not until 1869. Um, when Frederick Miescher isolated the nuclein from cells. Theodore Spedberg developed an ultra centrifuge to be used as an analytical instrument in 1925. Shortly after, Albert Claude utilized centrifugation to separate cell contents that remained intact in the process of cell fractionation. Ultimately, the design and manufacturing of ultra centrifuges became commercialized in 1946 and 7 when Edward Pickles founded Spinko. Myron Brack took advantage of density gradient centrifugation as a separation technique in 1950. Since this time, there have been various advancements in the technology of centrifuges to set achievements such as microprocessor controlled centrifuges, floor centrifuges for large scale product production, and automatic imbalance detection, among many more. The principles of modern centrifugation use centrifugal force in the separation of particles suspended in liquid. This centrifugal force acts outwards and away from the axis of rotation, while higher density particles sink and lower density part particles float in the medium. The particles begin to sediment at the bottom of the test tube when centrifugal force exceeds the buoyant forces of the liquid media and friction, frictional force of the particle. Here you can see the opposing forces at work during centrifugation. The goal of centrifugation is to optimize separation efficiency and prevent cell lysis. And this can be um, manipulated with certain parameters of operation, which include rotational speed, distance from solid particle to axis of rotation, particle size, liquid viscosity, and travel distance. Generally, the larger the particle size, the better for separation because a higher, at higher rotational speeds, unwanted particles such as bacteria or cell debris separate due to their smaller size. Additionally, selecting a medium with a lower viscosity would reduce the shear induced on a cell. There are several safety precautions to be aware of while operating a centrifuge. These precautions are important to avoid damage to the centrifuge content and avoid harming the operator. Some include making sure that the work surface is sturdy and level so that the centrifuge is stable, not at risk of falling or over or wobbling, or, and that the centrifuge is balanced and loaded properly. The benefits and limitations of centrifugation include the uh, managing high con concentrations of insoluble material within the feed, cost and space effectiveness, while the limitations are that the threshold size at a specified rate when removing particles, and that there's reduced cell viability and increase in cell debris. For the maintenance and care of the centrifugation, it's important that mechanical parts are cleaned properly and lubricated sufficiently in order for the centrifuge to operate safely and correctly. For example, O-rings must be cleaned and lubricated to prevent sample leakage. Regular inspection for scratches and wear are important because they indicate whether the centrifuge or parts of the centrifuge need to be replaced or maintained in order to restore centrifuge function. By maintaining and caring for the centrifuge regularly, high centrifuge performance and quality outputs can be attained. Small-scale centrifuges are used for lab-scale purposes or pilot plant-scale production. 
They are helpful to determine if the cell clarification process is viable prior to scale up to large scale equipment and materials. Small scale centrifuges function either through rotating shear or capillary shear. These are two examples of small lab scale and pilot scale centrifuges used for clarification purposes. And some major parameters are their centrifugal force, max rotational speed, volume capacity, and some centrifuges actually have special features such as refrigeration capabilities or uh, manual or automatic discharge. Large scale centrifuges are used for commercial manufacturers who perform cell clarification on their products. They require much more floor space than small scale centrifuges, but function similarly. Uh, two main types of centrifuges for cell clarification include tubular bowl centrifuges and disk stack centrifuges. Tubular bowl centrifuges can be seen here on the right. Um, the feed enters at the bottom end of the centrifuge and the motor rotates the centrifuge while the heavy fraction of cell particles get separated from the light fraction of liquid solution through two different streams, one on the left and one on the right. In disk stack centrifuge, the discharge travels upward through channels above the stack of disks, then through nozzles into a chamber with its own centripetal pump. Centrifugal forces push solids to the bottom out of the disks through their nozzles. Smaller disks of 0.5 to 2 millimeter distances provide optimal separation of particles. These are two large scale centrifuge examples. One is a vertical top loaded centrifuge on the left, while the other is a horizontal centrifuge on the right. The Sorval centrifuge has flexible batch bioprocessing capabilities, while the horizontal peeler centrifuge has a fully automated and validated CIP process for cleaning. Finally, uh, when selecting the right centrifuge, the operator or scientist must ask and know uh, prior to operation uh, these questions. So floor standing models with a higher capacity and various rotor configurations would best suit processes with large or varying volumes. If the samples are temperature sensitive, a centrifuge with refrigeration and temperature control would be required. There needs to be enough room available to house and operate the centrifuge and some cell samples are better separated at low speed while others such as whole cell separation can be conducted with ultra centrifuges. And thank you.